Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, March 26, 2019, meeting of the Urban Village Development Commission, what appears to be the last one ever. Meeting is open. I never use the gavel, so I thought I was going to try it today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start. First of all, welcome. Thanks for coming. I, before we get started, I actually want to let people know, if you haven't already signed up, we will have some time for public comment tonight. There's a sign-up sheet there, so we ask that you sign up there, and I'll call for it um, after, uh, after the applicant presentation this evening. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with the uh, approval of minutes from uh, December 18th, which was our last meeting. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions on any of this? I do have one um, one correction. It's on page. Should I have it up here? It's on page uh, nine of fifty-seven, um, and uh, it's where it's the uh, second paragraph under other business and announcements, Lucy, and it says. Um, he continued, this is me speaking, he's not aware of any public process or discussion about the changes of this regarding parking um, and that other parking lots such as the one near the movie theater are adopting them too. I actually didn't say that they are adopting because I was unaware. I would like to have that change to maybe considering adopting these changes as well. Great. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Chairman? <laughs> he, he wanted one of those. One time. <laughs> I move that we approve the uh, minutes from last meeting, uh, December 18th, 2018. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the uh, main agenda item tonight, and that's the uh, public meeting for the High Street Conversion and the survey. And I'm going to turn this over to Lucy. Good evening. So you, um, I have not become a smoker. Um, I've been sick, so I apologize if I'm uh, not totally on my game tonight. But I got off my deathbed just for you guys because I didn't want to miss the last meeting. Um, so tonight, um, this is going to be kind of a tag team. Um, I'm going to give you the introduction. Um, uh, there are representatives from Hewitt Landscape Architects as well as uh, Sarah Hoy from the IHCA and several people from Polygon. And so between all of us, because this is a joint recommendation from the three parties, I'm going to start with the introduction and then Hewitt will provide a much more detailed um, understanding of the survey and results and then the proposal because they've done most of that work. So just um, to make sure that we remember the context, uh, the blue line uh, represents the area of High Street that's being changed. Uh, it's next to Westridge North, which was the plat um, with which it was originally associated. And then there are other Westridge properties in this area, as well as West Highlands Park. So uh, Park and Ride is here, Grand Ridge Plaza is here. This is 9th Avenue, and this is Discovery Drive. And just for a couple of context photos, looking from the bottom, from um, Lakeside, looking up the hill, um, that's the image uh, that's shown as number one. Number two and number three are existing photos of High Street. These are things that you were shown during the plat process. Um, and I just, this is the slide that we used uh, during the platting process. You likely remember that the point of the plat isn't the specific design. It is making sure that the tracks um, and elements that are proposed are appropriately sized for the uses. And these were the materials we put together, but I thought it was also useful because it gave a sense of kind of the um, conceptual character that was shown for each of these areas and the sort of level of detail. Um, just to run through the timeline, uh, last March, so about a year ago, surprisingly, um, we issued the staff report in mid-April. The UVDC recommended approval to the council, and in mid-July, the council approved it, concurring with the UVDC recommendation that there be a public process to identify which, which recreational amenities 
um, along with the trail and overlook would be provided as part of this. There was a two week survey period in late October. And so those are the, um, that's mainly what we're gonna be looking at now. The survey identified that there were certain fixed elements. Um, for instance, the trail would be created by removing half of the paving. Um, there would be an overlook located at the um, western edge, approximately where the Red Star is. There were approximately three to five recreational amenities of a certain size and location, although they could be combined. We had um, locations for the east-west trails, which were again fixed, and the fact that um, residential lots would be five to 10 feet away from the recreational amenities that we were considering. So um, the survey was open for two weeks. The survey was created um, through a joint effort of the same parties that I mentioned. 218 people visited the site and 94 took the survey. The survey was kind of constructed in three parts. First, it was a blank slate. What do you want there? And we got some very interesting ideas. And then we had um, sort of specific categories of ideas, passive, active, children, child-oriented, and then um, neighborhood amenities, I think, was the fourth one. And then we asked people, based on both your blank slate and these specific examples, what things would you want to see there? What were the top three things that you wanted to see? And what were the things that you did not want to see? That was very educational as well. The, um, there's a list up here of the things that um, were prioritized through the survey. Um, you know, I think we had all talked about an off-leash dog area. In the end, that is one of the few things that was given a high priority that was not included because um, there was a concern that with houses adjacent, that was just not, that was not gonna meet the noise and nuisance uh, requirements that had been established through the plat. So um, the city established, uh, the, not the city, the city Polygon and IHCA established a framework um, as a result of working on, uh, looking at the results of the survey, knowing what we knew uh, from the plat and looking at the design. And so um, we wanted to implement the priorities identified in the survey, but recognize that we had limited space, adjacent residences, and that we needed to have something that was reasonable to build and maintain. Second, we wanted something that was visually interesting and that took advantage of its location. Third, we wanted it to um, serve a broad range of users while ensuring that there was safety. We wanted to focus the views to the overlook and also um, have views out from the main level of the homes, but we weren't trying to preserve views from the backyard level, which was almost at the trail. And then um, another big driver was retaining certain relevant uses. Uh, public works operations needs to be able to get onto the trail and access the manholes and maintain the wet utilities. And um, Lakeside has a neighborhood, you may remember there's a neighborhood in this area, a future Lakeside neighborhood, and so we're preserving a, a portion of the roadway to allow access future access to that neighborhood when it's constructed. And then there were a series of plat conditions that are relevant, and I mention those just because it helps frame what we're talking about tonight. They were provided in full in your packet. A um, Couple of uh, ones that I would touch on. The uh, number 17 was about safe transitions. Originally, um, the trail just was shown coming up and having bollards. And we were concerned that drivers, um, you know, if it was dark, if it was rainy, that to make this turn, we wanted something that was very clear that you were not able to continue and that the road turned. Um, and that would have been true at this end, although um, there's unlikely to be as much traffic on that section. Um, we were looking for recreation that provides active and passive, all ages, with children as an integral user, 
complement rather than duplicate other uses in the area. The um, site development permits that the UVDC reviewed for other Westridge properties didn't necessarily have a lot of specifics, but now we know that some uh, there's going to be a pea patch, there are certain open spaces, there's a water park. There are all these various things that are coming in, and we're not trying to duplicate those as part of the high street conversion. Um, and that the trail would be overlaid with trail grade asphalt as well as special paving and markers at certain nodes. What that main, mainly means is, you know, where these east-west trails come in that mark various spots where you can connect, that it's very easy to sort of have a sense of where you are on the trail and where you could get to if you took one of those side trails. So tonight um, we're looking for comments from the commission and from the public to assist the staff in preparing a decision on this uh, administrative site development permit. Um, I just want to emphasize that this is a conceptual plan. So uh, it's not as detailed as we'll get when we're actually ready for construction. Um, but we're looking at your recommendation based on the survey and that we be consistent with the plat conditions and implement the development agreement. Any questions before I hand this off? I have none. Do you guys have any? Uh, yeah, I do not. Uh, actually, okay. I, I actually I take oh. that back. I have one uh, to think sure. about when we get into discussion. You mentioned uh, some of the details on the West Ridge. I don't want to go into a lot of that, but if you happen to have drawings or something that you can share with us at, in, later, that would be great. Yeah. Unless you have it now. Uh, like you, you mentioned water park. I don't, when you said water park, you meant like a water feature of some sort? So I'm going to let um, Polygon talk about that okay. um, because they probably know more about it. But this park down here in the South Townhomes has some kind of water play element, and I don't know a lot of the details. Um, and then this is another open space area, and this is the pea patch. And, and uh, maybe pea patch is different, but are all of these open to the general public or anyone in the Highlands that wants to go visit and utilize them? Sure. Um, yes, typically our parks are, even though they're specifically created and meant to serve the immediate neighborhood, um, there isn't a restriction on other people using it because we hope that people visit different areas. Um, the pea patches are usually given to the immediate neighborhood first, and if they don't fill up, then it's a bigger area. That program is run by the um, board. Is that right? Highlands Council. Highlands Council. And, um, and so they manage that um, sign-up process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So who from Polygon is going to join us today? Richard or Nick? I think they're going to make their presentation first. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, Matt Porteous with Hewitt in Seattle. Uh, I'm a landscape architect and the director of our practice there. Um, the last time I was here was probably for some Grand Ridge work uh, a long time ago. So good to be back in this good room and good to see you all again and interesting to be here for your last meeting. So congratulations on a long road <laughs> that you've been on. Um, and I think Lucy did a wonderful job of, as always of kind of setting the table, I think. And so I'll dive in. I'll hit some of the same touch points that she had relative to the survey kind of briefly, but dive really into the, to the, to the concept plan. And it is just a concept kind of level plan. So there's lots of opportunity for refinement and specificity as we move forward, particularly related to utilities, um, clearances for maintenance, and so forth. Um, and, and as Lucy had mentioned, um, I think we're familiar with where we are located. We've, we've taken these and just for sort of uh, nomenclature, 
um, the areas, the area to the north um, is area one, and then moving uh, to the south to, to finally end up at area five. So for reference, that's how we've sort of annotated them, and that was consistent with what was in the survey. So we've sort of asked questions about those particular locations and activities um, and, and have feedback in the survey that we can talk about if we need to. Um, it's about a 1,700 foot, almost 1,800 foot long path that many of you probably walked on, um, currently a road. Uh, the framework for the project, Lucy mentioned, so I won't repeat those. The, the goals, some of the particular goals um, for each one of the sort of areas of the neighborhood amenity versus active recreation versus passive are outlined here. These are really um, um, excerpts from the survey or themes identified from the survey. Um, not necessarily our words, but just sort of a collection of, of identifying those themes that were pre prevalent in, in the survey to give us a framework or an armature to begin to build from. Again, those areas, and, and we'll start uh, at the, the north with area five, uh, area one, pardon me, and in that area, um, we'll talk about in a second. This, this looking to the west of this road, looking to the um, uh, towards back towards the the Olympics. Um, each one of these areas is sort of outlined relative to the impact it would have uh, to the adjacent relatively monoculture plantings that are on that edge, um, and it, the status that they were at the end of last year, which is when this photograph was taken. So it's pretty close to where they are now. And, and of note, I think we can talk about um, it perhaps in more detail as we get to area three, uh, which is where the sort of view area is or the overlook area is. And, and this is stationed um, just for reference if we need to come back to this uh, incrementally by foot uh, with zero being at the north and then um, approaching 1700 at the south. Um, so if we need to reference a particular location, we can come back to that. Um, the existing fence uh, that's there largely would remain, um, and there's some landscape before the fence uh, between the existing curb and the fence, and that would also uh, largely, largely remain. I say largely because in the, in the area of the overlook and in a couple uh, uh, at the sort of north and south ends, those transition away as the property line sort of deviates from the fence line. Um, so area, Area one um, is characterized by this uh, program amenity list that you see in the upper right. Um, it's it's really an entry um, garden, botanical garden. Um, it has a has a water feature, um, and we'll, there's some imagery that will follow this that you see in your your board the the board sees in their packet um, that we'll transition to in a moment. Um, elements such as gateway signage, uh, benches. Uh, sun shelters um, with tables below, um, varied paving, unique paving, um, meandering paths, uh, drinking fountain uh, with a dog-friendly bowl, uh, waste receptacles also with those for uh, pet waste disposal, removable bollards um, and, and sort of maintenance uh, response to parking a truck in the entry area to then allow for uh, that the maintenance activity to occur. Um, uh, there are some existing lights on on the road today, and those would be relocated. Uh, two of them would be in this area as sort of the, the acorn top pedestrian light. Um, there'd also be some layered lighting that would come in in the form of small step lights or bollards, um, and a lighting uh, plan would be part of that next level of detail that Lucy was mentioning. Um, the uh, fence extension, uh, that existing fence stops uh, roughly here, there's a hedge, an existing hedge that has a, a wall that you can kind of uh, get to a, a parking area on the other side of it. And we want to secure that from um, um, unintended sort of use. Uh, so securing that with a fence and extending it would be part of this uh, portion. Um, there'd be interpretive signage and educational signage with the botanical garden aspect of it. So it goes hand in hand with uh, education. Um, some of those um, elements you can see in the section below, uh, berming of the landscape to reinforce sort of the smaller room quality uh, and provide the buffering between the existing, um, the existing edge and, and the future uh, homes here as well. And Lucy had mentioned the sort of circulation as you're headed on high 
to the to the west um, and giving that indication of of uh, the turn and allowing for the future connection of eighth uh, uh, to the north six sorry to the north um, as well uh, and the retention of the bike movements through there some of the elements indicative in this area uh, or what you see here, and those are, again, some of those key elements I had mentioned that gives a kind of a visual reference to the sun shelter um, and some of the sort of quality of this uh, botanical garden. That space is roughly about 5,000 square feet or so is what that whole area is, just for reference, maybe 70 by 70-ish. Uh, and then a view um, of, of that space, kind of just a conceptual view of that space. And that puts, starts to put some more um, conceptual thinking into what some of those elements are, particularly the gateway pieces and the signage. Art would be an, an overlay into that. I think there's an opportunity for art um, throughout this, and we heard that from the community in the survey, that art was an important piece of it. Um, you know, for example, and the details have yet to be developed, but these columns could have an art tile mosaic on them, for example. The second area and the fourth area are very similar um, in that they're the, they're the downhill extension of the neighborhood walk. Uh, they receive into, this, into the trail, the multimodal trail, um, with some stairs, because there's grade change um, as you move uh, from the east to the west and head downhill. Um, in each one of these locations, the response is very similar, and we heard that in the survey, that these are sort of the two areas that are a little more subtle and more quiet than the ends. Um, the, that some of those elements are listed here. Um, I won't necessarily go through all of them because I know there's other things in the agenda today, but as we, as we, I'll hit the highlights of some of them. One of them is a free library, which is working with the existing uh, free library uh, plan that it's in the Highlands. Um, some wayfinding uh, with uh, reference to where you are and if you wanted to use this trail for exercise, which we heard from the survey, a lot of folks would do that. Uh, having markers in certain terms of, you know, you, here's your quarter mile mark or your, you know, 400 meter dash or whatever you're sort of pacing yourself on. There would be some marker opportunity. Exercise equipment uh, for trail side use. Um, again, some benches and, and waste uh, receptacles. Lighting here, but at a slightly lower level. Still a safe level, but the amplification of the lighting would be higher at the ends, a little quieter here. And then some of the imagery relative, relative to those wayfinding markers, the um, change in material along the trail. So as you're on the trail headed downhill or uphill, north or south, uh, you have a visual and audible warning or clue that there's a connection point happening uh, to prevent some of the uh, potential collision points of those coming down the neighborhood walkway. Um, the overlook is uh, roughly halfway through the, the, the trail. It's in the middle section, overlooks to the west. Um, the existing curb line uh, today is also roughly the existing curb line shown here, uh, or the proposed line there. And this new area of land is behind the existing fence that's there today. So the fence is on the backside of the curb, essentially, and there's more property because um, the property con continues beyond. Um, and then there's a steep grade transition down to the quarry below that, and that grade transition is roughly here. So we have two, uh, two plaza areas, one upper, one lower. The lower one is roughly the tra at the trail elevation. The upper one is up about three feet or so from the trail. Connection from uh, that neighborhood walk, and there'd be um, along that street, there'd be at the neighborhood walk locations, some indications, some wayfinding elements that would give clues uh, to some of the same vocabulary that's used at the high street conversion, uh, either in terms of light or um, a wayfinding marker. Um, and as you transition down, um, we can actually make a, um, you know, sort of a uh, connection here to this upper level and then stare down or stay over here, head over to this as a uh, exercise 
element as well and uh, swing um, opportunity and I'll show you the swing opportunity in a minute. In fact, the exercise area is on this side and the swing area is on this side. Uh, this is a multi-generational swing, it's also called a mommy and me swing, um, but um, it's more of a multi-generational swing. A little disc discovery trail aspect to, to the smaller um, side trail from the multimodal trail. Um, viewing opportunities with seating uh, a, a bench that tiers up um, so you can get above, visually above any railing that's um, um, at the edge. Uh, and, and yet your foreground has landscape in it and, and you're looking to the f sort of the future or the, the further in the distant view um, over, over the quarry, you're actually looking into the valley. Uh, there's some existing trees in, on, on, in the, within the right-of-way that would be selectively thinned and pruned to uh, enhance the quality of the pedestrian experience through the area. Um, the landscape in general, and we'll talk to the landscape in a, in a slide or two, um, but this area would have a, a, a treatment similar to the uh, sort of structure, the landscape structure of the area one or area five. Um, there's some existing meadow area that would be um, uh, hydroceded and so forth, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, you can see the section through that upper plaza, the trail, the lower plaza. And roughly along the entire length of the trail, the backyards or future backyards of those homes are roughly five feet above, five to six feet above the trail. Some of the elements that you see here um, and, the, and the sort of this uh, um, seating elements, stair transitions, uh, discovery trail, uh, new fencing, um, bleacher style seating, multi-generational swings. Um, and this uh, will work with, uh, rather in terms of maintenance, uh, the, the wood is not the likely best choice for that area because of um, some maintenance issues. We'll work with, with folks to get the right maintenance uh, selection there. A view of that, that space. A couple of those existing lights would be um, relocated here as part of that um, overlook area as well. Uh, the last area, area five, uh, is uh, transitions from Ellis uh, through a similar gateway um, piece that was to the north, uh, area one, uh, through an entry garden at this edge, um, passing then into uh, a lawn area, multiple uh, use, flexible lawn area. Uh, roughly, it's probably about six or 7,000 square feet in size, that space, about 45 feet by 150 or so. Um, and then a, a play area that's uh, for picnic shelters and so forth, um, some hammocks, uh, built-in hammocks. I have some images of that I'll transition to in a moment. Uh, covered shelters, uh, integrated uh, um, into the paving would be uh, chess or hopscotch and various kid uh, children uh, oriented games. Some stairs down, this is actually up a little bit higher than the turf uh, with some stairs on the edge. Exercise equipment here, uh, some of the same trail markers appear through this area as well. And this is the existing road that's there today uh, that would uh, be uh, bollarded off at this edge. And then the future connection shown here for the uh, extension to Lakeside as uh, Lucy had mentioned. Section through that, that road we were just talking about, uh, the multimodal trail through the lawn area, the stairs, the stairs beyond and up the slope to the, to the homes. Uh, you can see the exercise equipment here, uh, some of the picnic tables, uh, be the same shelters that we had shown on the, on area one. And that's a, a visual graphic of that. The planting character um, 
looking at this in, in just a few zones and a lot more detail will come as this gets discussed further with, with uh, Sarah and her team. Uh, but the <coughs> tree framework, um, uh, not wanting to block height, block views, not wanting to um, impede the maintenance operations along the trail, um, mainly small trees um, that would be used, a mix of evergreen and deciduous uh, placement would be needed to be choreographed with utilities, um, obviously. Um, but looking at the sort of general number of them that are referenced here, which is roughly the same number that are uh, out there today, so some of those trees um, would be replaced in kind. Um, looking at the understory of that, the landscape area, the transitional mix at the, at the north and south ends and at the overlook, uh, which provides a structure for, for the landscape. Uh, the entry garden at the south end, um, which provides the visual interest and seasonal character. Um, there'd also be seasonal character built into each one of these areas. Um, and then the botanical garden um, at, at area one that we had talked about. Um, and the, I'll skip over the hydro seed for a second. The, the existing western edge of the road um, where there's existing trees and existing shrubs. Um, and I think from a maintenance standpoint, there's, a, there's some weeds that do come up through that the mulch that's there today. So reinforcing that, helping from moisture retention um, and, and preventing some of the maintenance, um, putting in an understory there, uh, enriching the pedestrian experience. And then the, the meadow mix um, on the slope condition uh, between the zones, uh, providing a, a relatively uniform canvas that then has uh, highlights coming through it in a, in a choreographed way to provide that seasonality. And that is the end of, of this piece. I think you have one final plan in your packet, which is the whole um, sort of tip to tail of, of this at a scale that you can kind of makes it a little legible. Do you have questions for Matt while he's up there? I, I know I do. Do you guys have I questions? I do, yeah. All right. Commissioner Lee. <laughs> I got a few. They're, they're sort of random and small. Uh, the first one probably refers back, Lucy, to the, you had the wall height was four feet with then a, uh, I think it was 36 inches, 50% open. When I looked at some of the diagrams, I'll find a decent page to refer to. Sorry about that. I should have made it in my notes. I apologize. Um, how about page 10? Can you show? My page 10 is the overlook area. Area three enlarged plants. Yeah, area three so enlarged. I think the first piece I would say is I think that poly Polygon has moved away from using walls to grading between the public amenities. So it would be that, what's shown on there, the landscape buffer? Would that, yeah. would that be the grading up to that? And then that would yes. be a fence that's... Still limited to 36 so inches. So that particular fence that's shown would not be allowed, frankly. Right, I think that's just, well, actually, it probably is correct. It's just the way it's graphically represented, to, and I'm not giving you a hard time, um, <laughs> because the way um, the typical fence that Polygon has done to meet this is alternating boards and gaps of equal size. So this is an accurate representation, other than you can't tell which ones are open and yeah, which ones are Yeah, I was using the people boards. for scale as well, figuring the people <laughs> probably weren't three feet tall, so. <laughs> So you're right, that fence does look much taller than okay. three feet. I, yeah, I think that there's, a, uh, and it's really hard to see in this, uh, it, there's actually perpendicular to our view here is the shorter fence uh, of the backyard, which so is four feet tall. So that's the, the, the divider, tall, okay. And then the trans side, yard. side yard fence is the taller fence. I have to be nitpicky on a, on a rendering as well, but I just know that no. the, the fence can add a lot of character or detract a lot of character along that, that pathway, right? No, Absolutely. that's a good yeah. clarification because um, 
So that probably is actually an accurate representation of the side yard fence. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. That would, because it's at the section. I shouldn't have okay. even tried. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you, were try, you were trying to help. Okay, I, so that was one I wanted to pull out. No other comments on that one. Um, a couple places you showed exercise equipment. Yes. So I use a lot of trails and things in the area from Mary Moore, from here and everywhere in between. And I've seen exercise elements around. And in the 20 years I've been doing that, I don't know if I've ever seen a human on any of them. Do you actually, do people actually use them and we have I, something that says that's better than a, another good seat or something which I do see used? I believe there's a member of the public who will be glad to testify good. about that. Good, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm um, happy as long, I just don't see it. So there, that was an element that we showed because it had been requested by some of the public. And I think it did get, um, um, we, we had wondered about that and there was some positive response through the survey and um, we know that there's a neighbor who is um, an advocate for that and I think he would be a good person to speak to That's that. great, for obvious reasons. I'm out there a lot and I would endorse it. I just wanna see yeah. people use it if we're gonna pay for it, Certainly. great. And, and I would add to to that once that discussion happens, which will be a fun a fun discussion to have. We've, um, you know, in terms of the character of it, that that image here is um, uh, a more robust and obvious. Um, and there may be opportunities. And this is a different type of use right. here, where it's a little more integrated and more natural. And so I think we could talk about that a little bit is, if we need to. Um, because we have seen them used in various locations, and we had similar observations, but we certainly heard it loud and clear in the survey. So. I'm not done yet. Uh -huh. um, back to page um, 10, which is the overlook area diagram. Again, I was sort of nitpicking. I was looking for the built-in seating, which would be number 14 on the diagram, and I didn't find a 14 anywhere on the... Uh, uh, it's kind of right here. Right. Oh, it's on yours. It's just not it's on, on ours. ours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries, yeah. and that was yeah. one of my guesses, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. good. And the last thing I had, either at the north or the south end, is there any parking for anybody? I guess at the north end on Highlands Drive, there was there's the existing parallel parking on the south side, yeah. right? Um, so that was a discussion item. High Street, not Highlands Drive, sorry, mm, thank you. It may have been a discussion item with the commission, but it was a big discussion item with the council. And um, uh, this, while this is appealing, there's so many people who live close by and as a, both a biking and walking facility, there was a determination that the on-street parking and just area-wide parking was sufficient for the way this was intended to be used and that it was not intended to be, you know, a destination where you reserve a picnic area and invite 50 of your closest relatives to come yeah. celebrate. So um, there isn't any dedicated parking, I guess is the short answer. You know, I think I would concur. We're gonna get a lot of people from Grand Ridge Plaza walking down, the, you know, I live in walking running distance sure. too. It's all use it a lot. So I agree, I just wanna make sure it was considered. Yep. Okay. That's my list. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Commissioner Rush. I had a, a question building on Carl's comment about the fencing on the side it's yards. Commissioner Lady, you. Sorry. <laughs> we're, we're having fun, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, that, and this might be more directed at Sarah, but is this going to adhere to the house and garden style setbacks and everything that goes with uh, fences that are put along paths and not having anything less than 50% permeable over four feet? Yeah, okay. So, um, and that's a, that's a good point that for many of these side yard fences, they are just, you know, the next house is the person who right. is sharing that and it's different along the limited sections where you have adjacent trails. Yep. Uh, the other question I had is, so this is this is IHCA maintained, it's not going to be city maintained, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And it's, will this be pulled out of the, this might be getting a little too far ahead, but master budget or is this gonna be, set down to the actual neighborhood assessment? So I don't think anyone who's at the microphone can answer that question. Okay. Sorry. All right, I'll let it go. Uh, oh, and the last question I had, you, you make a comment about coming off of High Street and turning that corner, making uh, a more prominent look at, making sure they don't drive straight onto the path. Mm -hmm. What, I wasn't clear on what the, what it's gonna look like. 
Well, I think from the city's perspective, the fact that it's very green with trees and other elements, that was the important thing because before, it almost looked like the road continued because okay, it was yeah. just paving with bollards. And so to not have any road present as you're looking axially down the road, I think was a big um, part of the solution for us. Got it, so yeah. this is a change to the original plan where the original plan had just a straight through path, yes. correct? Exactly. Correct. Sounds like it's more like up near 24th in the, uh, the tennis courts yeah. um, off of uh, Islands Drive. Right. Yeah. Block off Islands Drive. Okay. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, I'm Kimber. last, I've got a few questions that were on my list that have already been asked, so I may repeat some of these. Um, the Lakeside Road um, that's being reserved, is that two lanes or one? Two. Okay, it looked only this big on the, on the plan there, okay. So it'll be at least 20 feet wide, which is a standard fire, fire two lane fire lane. Okay, yeah. and then I guess along with that question, um, are we also addressing pedestrian safety because we've got grass and children and a two lane road, so we're addressing that as well? So the road um, at the, it's on the west side because north is to the right. Um, the uh, trees and the shrubs and things that are provided, thank you, along there will be part of our separation um, from the trail. And that is a pretty typical way that separation is provided um, at Esqua Highlands. Okay. Um, so and we're not expecting, I mean, I think the other thing to say is I mean, first of all, we don't know exactly what's gonna be in that neighborhood, but it's a relatively few number of homes. And part of having a narrow road that turns, it will tend to slow all the drivers down, which I think is really essential in this area. Um, I would want on the record strong request that we consider safety of families there with small kids moving from the walkway there through the bushes to that two lane road. There's something to consider. So, um, just to so make it's just a small strip of grass between pedestrians and children in the street. That's all I'm pointing right. out. Right, our planting strips are typically along a road, may only be four or five feet wide as well. So, I think that's where the shrubs, for instance, a hedge along there, is a good point. Um, we don't have that level of detail, but it's a good thing to keep in mind that we want something where. How about sticker bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another question, effective. I just need to be educated. What is a road alignment marker? Um, that was one I couldn't figure out. Let's find this image uh, for you here. Um, it's a, it would be for wayfinding. And as other... Um, there, there it is. Oops, back one. Thank you. There it is. Um, and, and it wouldn't say this. Um, as, as other <clears throat> roads in the existing uh, city framework, uh, intersect this trail <clears throat> so you know where you are oh, okay. so as you're passing along the trail you would have a, a sense of, of sort of where you are in the bigger picture of things oh, and you'd okay. pass okay. through <clears throat> starting from the south at Ellison you'd pass through and then you'd hit the various roads along the way. Okay, thank you. So for <clears throat> instance where those east-west trails um, many of them align with roadways so for instance where federal comes in you'd want yeah. to know that that trail aligns with <clears throat> federal. And, and to that point, right on this plan, federal hits right about here. So if, it, if you extend that over, you just, as you're on the trail, you just have a reference of where you are. Because sometimes it's a little disorienting to be <clears throat> down and away from that area and just to give you a, a sense well, of. It's obvious now, but my brain had a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this has already been mentioned on exercise equipment. I formerly lived in Talus, and we have an <clears throat> investment of exercise equipment there. So I appreciate the community's input that it is needed. But after 12 years living in Talos, and one of the exercise equipments was in property right next to my backyard, I never saw anyone in 10 years use it. So just want to make sure we're using the money correctly there. So we'd like to make sure the public wants it. Um, we'll, we'll make them. We'll get out there. Yeah. <laughs> that poor one guy is going to be in all. That's right. Um, I also had the budget question on how we're going to be funding the maintenance for this. And then the last one is a question that I haven't heard asked, and that's the timeline on, and I don't know if this is the timing for this question, but the timeline for the building of the homes and the building of the park mm. and mm -hmm. how that's gonna go and who's gonna be accessing the park while homes are being built or vice versa. Sure. 
Yeah, I think that polygon is probably best to answer the well, timeline there, discussion. Well, there actually was a plat condition. <clears throat> um, I'm just grabbing that so I make sure I get it correctly. If you look on... Um, or 35, page 16. I'm, well, I didn't get an official packet, so I'm looking at the actual page numbers in the memo, I think but if you look on page five and six of the memo. There's a couple that touch on it uh, in uh, different number ways. Number 32. Um, I think well, it's on page 15 of 57. Yeah. But so I don't, I'm not sure I know what track A and track D and. I so track A and track maps. D were the north and the south. Um, P, areas, the areas one and five. And then um, I'm doing this from memory, but. 35 I, is really the one that addresses that. Right, thank you. Acceptance of the conversion and improvements must be complete prior to finaling the last 10 homes in the plat. So. Um, the first part of that though is that they can't close High Street until they get a couple of the pieces of the neighborhood done. Right, so Ellis Drive is complete, so they are able to start and plan to so start that's done soon. Now. Okay. Does that answer your question? No. The park has to be done before the last 10 homes are done. Okay, I was trying on the map to actually check off lots 34 through 36 and actually see, mm. and, and I couldn't figure out what was track day and track D because the oh, lot see. numbers don't line up with the map that was given to us. There's, right. there's more lots than there are on the drawing, so I wasn't able to tell where, where those. So but just, that, um, can I show something? Sure. Let me just rephrase this. Um, the park will be open before all the homes are complete. There'll be 10 homes left to be built and the park will be open. At least 10, yeah. Okay. Right, so tracks, um, a and E, the houses that were immediately adjacent in the plat to those two areas, they needed to have those areas complete before those homes were um, uh, finaled so that you wouldn't have those particular areas being constructed after the homes were occupied. But overall, High Street, um, had a longer timeline because it was hard to say exactly how long it would take to I construct that. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, it does, thanks. <clears throat> and that was all my questions. Okay. Thank you. I have a few. Um, just uh, touching on that Lakeside Road uh, question that Michelle had. Um, the, I'll call it a spur, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, are there bollards on the south end of that? What's that piece going to look like and for so access I, to it, basically? So we're going to, you know, the amount of roadway, the, the necessary width of roadway will be left. Um, there's still a lot of discussion about where the bollards go. Um, one way to do it is to put the bollards. So I mean, we're concerned about people parking where they're not supposed to park. So if you put the bollards all the way at the end, people will probably use it. On the other hand, if you bollard it at the south end, people get used to it not being used and then are unhappy when the road gets opened in, a, in 10 years. So we're still debating the best way to um, secure that area. So it's sort of leading me to my next point and that is, can it be, can we use it for temporary parking until such time? I, it, there's, it's not wide enough for people to turn around and safely. Okay because it's not intended, you know, oh, okay. it's, it's only 20 feet, 20, maybe 22 feet wide. 18 point turn. All right, just thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, uh, first of all, Matt, welcome back. Thank you. It's been a while. Thank you, yeah. Uh, thanks for that uh, presentation. There's a lot of good stuff here. I'm actually very excited about this whole park idea um, and have been obviously supportive from early on because I think it's gonna be a tremendous uh, asset to the community. I do have a few questions. Um, uh, let's see, on the dimensions, uh, I saw a couple things here. I'll, I'll go to page uh, page seven, which is the area one in large plan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I sort of counted this up. This is basically going uh, south to north, correct? North to south. The, so the left side would be north? Oh, the, le the left side is north, yes. The left right, the right hand north. side is south of the section at the okay. bottom. Yeah, the, home, the, homes are, the homes are here. On the right, okay. Yeah, yeah, and the existing hedge and the wall are here. So I kind of 
crude math added this up about 114 feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, what is, I don't need to know every piece, but sort of what's the, the narrowest width and the, the widest width of, uh, as we go through the park? Um, I didn't see those, in, if they're here somewhere, I just, I didn't see them, but I, we saw the length, but I didn't see the width. So uh, I, one thing I would add, because while, while you're doing the math yep. in your head, I'll cover for a minute. Um, one of the things that Matt touched on in his presentation that I think is important to point out is there's the way the road appears today, um, you know, which is sidewalk, planting strip, road, which is two lanes with bike lanes on either side, and then there's nothing on the far side. But in reality, there is actually a lot of extra right of way right. in certain locations and no extra right of way in other locations. Planting strip on the west side and a lot of that area does it go down? Yeah. Um, well, they um, Lakeside um, to protect the public and themselves planted the trees and installed the fence. I think they installed the fence. It's not representative of where the right of way is. So, for instance. This area um, is, is quite wide. There's a lot of excess right-of-way in that sort of um, northwest corner. Yeah. And again, where the overlook is, there's 25 to 30 feet of extra excess or unused right-of-way right now beyond west of the road, <laughs> whereas in other areas, it's just the right-of-way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a good description that it varies quite a bit. And, and I think that the, this section, where this section is, is you know, roughly 100 and change. Um, we're always looking to maintain that buffer between the homes, and so always having at least a 10-foot buffer between the homes and whatever activity is happening, regardless of the width of the overall. Um, quite often, because of the grade change, um, and not wanting to have walls built unnecessarily uh, that would have to be maintained and so forth over time. Um, a three to one slope, you know, is it easy to maintain slope? So we're going out that distance, which gives us a, a buffer on, on this edge of, you know, 28 or 30 feet or something like that pretty frequently. Um, the overall section through here, um, I think we have something like 55 uh, feet or something like that. In total, but it it, it does vary because, as Lucy mentioned, the the existing fence is not coincident with the property line or the edge of right of way, and when you get to the the <clears throat> the overlook area in particular, and you can this is a good depiction here, you can start to see it diverge away from that existing road edge, mm -hmm. and then when you get to the overlook itself, it's quite a bit further back um, from from the existing edge of yeah. road. And, and then, area five seems like the, I mean, it's, the, it's this image here, but also the one you have on page yeah. whatever, 13 or whatever. That seems, I mean, looking at this, it just. It's seems quite like wide. A big party place. Um, well, and, and so. One which I love, by the way. Um, both in the north and the south areas, there was, if you, if you remember the plat, there was a separate park that Polygon attract from out of the plat land that they were proposing as a park, both at the north and the south ends. These are tracks A and E. And what, instead of keeping them as segregated and distinct areas, they have been incorporated into the overall plan. Okay. So those are not actually from the right of way, those are additive from the plat. That's why I'm seeing additional space there. Okay, because it looked a little wider than. By the way, and that I think it's great. I just it, sure. I'm just hoping these renderings are, yeah. you know, are, uh, are depicting what mm -hmm. we we're going to see, and, and it mm -hmm. won't feel way narrower than mm -hmm. I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's great. Um, uh, there was a, some talk about lighting, um, which sounds great. You know, low level uh, lighting primarily for safety, I assume. Mm -hmm. It made me think of um, some stuff we talked about early on with parks and other things regarding emergency call boxes. I mean, this mm -hmm. I could see how this could be a, you know, it's a long, deep space, mm -hmm. really, at night, and 
I don't know we have, uh, I was gonna ask what we have in other parts of the community, so I don't know you know, if Sarah or Christy are gonna speak later, if they could speak to that, that would be great. Sure. And if there's a possibility of doing something there to have you know, a couple of call boxes as we go down, mm -hmm. or, or something that would be more of a safety feature. Mm -hmm. So I'll let um, Matt answer specifically relative to design. My memory is that the only place that we have the emergency call boxes are is in association with Swedish. What about and, par and park and ride too? <coughs> I thought we had them at park and ride. Too. Um, maybe internal to the park and ride. I don't remember. Okay. I just know in in the Swedish campus mm -hmm. they've installed oh, those yeah. sort of um, bollards or yeah. kiosks or something mm -hmm. to specifically serve that purpose. But that's I think have been project specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just something to consider, I think. I think it's a good comment. It, 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 well, it did come up um, relative to the survey, uh, and the community had mentioned that um, it wasn't an uh, over, sort of over um, arching theme, but it did come up as a consideration. We talked about it within the team, and I think it could easily find its way into the plan. I think they're pretty discrete elements, and they do provide, you know, the notion of safety and, and literal safety in time of need. You know, particularly maybe the, I think there's there may be enough eyes on the space and, and sort of an out essentially at, at area one and five, um, but the overlook um, as maybe people are there watching sort of the sunset and then you're exiting and it's a little darker than when you, when you arrive, that mm -hmm. might be um, a one likely place that could occur. Okay, thanks. Uh, the multimodal path, I think I know the answer to this. I just want to confirm what is and isn't allowed. I assume bikes, e-bikes, skates, rollerblades, all those things are allowed? Hmm. Strollers, obviously, scooters. Well, yeah, they're actually, I would have to, I don't remember off the top of my head, Jeff. The multi-use trail standards at Issaquah Highlands, I think that it allows bikes and pedestrians as primary users and the secondary users are um, allowed if it can be designed in a manner to safely use them. Now, I don't know, again, if Sarah has certain rules or, or limitations that she places on them, um, but I would say that from the development agreement perspective, it's the bikes and pedestrians that are the primary users. So along those lines, um, has there been any discussion on um, striping the path to be something like Green Lake or when I was recently in uh, Tel Aviv and they had, it, was, it was a great meandering path with lots of bikes and pedestrians mm -hmm. and families walking and they separated wheeled from non-wheeled. Mm -hmm. uh, is there some talk about that? Are we thinking about that? We, uh, we certainly thought about it when we were talking early conceptual um, design effort and thinking about materials, um, you know, largely it's asphalt and then we have these sort of interrupted moments of, of pavement change for the sort of the rumble strip, if you will, where the intersections might occur. And then down that linear shot, I, I, I would think that as the use would dictate it, if it was as well loved as we all hope it would be, that we would want to clarify the use. I'm not sure that I'm not sure if out of the gate we'd want to do that or let it become um, lived in for a season and then and then see what how it is utilized. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really sure. It was talked about, but we okay. hadn't proposed on it. Yet. I'm certainly not an expert, but I can tell you that this, if, if it's used a lot, which I'm hoping this is, it's just so much better to define it than yeah. for people to guess and dodge you know, and I, and bikes I, and stuff. And I think here with the topography of uphill and downhill, there's clearly going to be a little bit different speed use, um, particularly for bikes going right. uphill and downhill, which probably takes a little bit of a different twist on the Green Lake model, which yeah. you know, which is flat and going around. So okay. um, we we would have to look into that more. Okay. Um, let's see. I saw some stuff from the survey. I think it was probably some freeform comments, um, and I didn't see anything come in here. But we have really quite a lot of space, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to see an informal performance space, whether it's through via you know some sort of a berm or you know a rock or concrete or something maybe integrated um, into one of the side. I don't know, it could be sort of out of the way, but I, I could see us doing some programming potentially with ITCA um, 
people wanting to do their own thing, you know, obviously being so close to the homes and everything, it's not like we're gonna do concerts and things like that out there, but I could see doing, you know, a proclamation or some sort of a presentation around, I don't know, Salmon Days or something, I don't know, but mm -hmm. there could be a lot of things there and maybe people wanna go up and strum a guitar up there and do a sing-along or whatever, I don't know. But I, I'd love to see something set where it would be obvious that you could do something like that, but it doesn't have to be, you know, an amphitheater or, a, mm -hmm. you know, true performance space with, with that. But I do want to ask, um, if we do that, if it's possible to, to get some power, even if that power is only accessible through a lockbox or something, just in case you do do something there and you have a PA system mm -hmm. or something, that would be really great. Um, yeah, I think, I think that what's uh, kind of exists it now in this concept plan, but could be made more robust, Jeff, to kind of hit on some of those points you were making, is we do have a grade change here between this upper area of, that's more of a, a you know, play space or, or a plaza space, and then down to the lower uh, turf area. And so the stairs that are there, the bleacher style stairs versus mm -hmm. just regular stairs could be made to um, accommodate that function. And I think that uh, power will be out there already, so having some event power, um, okay. I would imagine, yeah. would be not um, overly onerous to do. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'll just throw my two cents two cents in on the exercise equipment. I, you know, I I don't know how much they use, but again, I was on a trip recently to the Middle East, and I was in Dubai, and it, they were being used a lot um, on this one beachside access, and uh, maybe it's because of the beach and everyone's health conscious or whatever, but it was, uh, there were people waiting for these exercise stations. I thought that was interesting because I hadn't seen that here. Um, but I guess it happens. Um, and then one other thing from a programming perspective, um, and I don't want to get into, you know, which holidays or anything, but I would love to see IHCA um, think about, you know, doing things like some sort of, a, you know, holiday lights or displays or something like that. Um, at different times of the year to celebrate various things. I think it'd be pretty cool to help people gather down there and, and uh, just from a visual and programming perspective would be pretty cool, I think, if we can do that. So I think that's it for the moment. Um, yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. So, um, Maybe we take public comment now? Uh, well, I would. I thought someone was going to talk about the water park and pea patch. Um, I'd like to know just a little bit more about that because if we're, if we're talking about amenities that we're not going to put in here because they might be somewhere else, I'd like to hear about what, what and where. Hi there, Richard, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Rawlings with uh, Polygon Northwest. Um, yeah, so it, uh, you, I don't know if you will recall, but uh, let's see, I have to drive a cursor that I'm no good at. So, Jeff, the, uh, the, where the cursor is now is the, what we were calling Townhome South, that's the project that's currently under construction. Mm -hmm. That has uh, uh, <coughs> a park in the southwest corner here that's currently you know, under construction, and that has the that sort of uh, half circle uh, promenade walk, if you will, play lawn, and then um, that's where uh, we're planning. Uh, there, there's a modest uh, uh, structured play uh, toy for the kids, and then there's a roughly 20 by 40 picnic shelter, and then uh, and the third item that's there is the uh, water feature, which we're just kind of working through the details, but it's, but it would be something along the lines of uh, what the existing rock that's been drilled up at the first park that was created. Uh, I don't think we're imagining the stream type component, but potentially a series of rocks that you could kind of walk around and play on and touch, and that would be wet. But so, okay, is that yeah, no, that clear, helps clear enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can kids kind of. I mean, I know it's not a stream or anything, yeah, it's splashing it in. And feel it, yeah. yeah. What about adults like him? <laughs> well, if he gets off his bike, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, that's helpful. Uh, and then you mentioned the pea patch. So um, to the north, here is the Westridge Townhomes North mm -hmm. that's uh, not under construction yet. And that has also, uh, excuse me, 
this green rectangle is another more lawn and plaza and seating type space. And then the triangle to the north of that is the, is the pea patch. And so the reason I asked the question about uh, access to these parks is because we did have uh, one development in the Highlands off of High Street where signs were put up that said park only for resident, you know, like local resident use or whatever. And I just want to make sure that we're not, because this is, you know, uh, Westridge, that we're not limiting that to rest Westridge folks only. I, I understand the yep. P patch offering it to them first, and then if something's available, offer it to somebody right. else. But the other parks, I, you know, I, I would expect them to be open to everybody. Yes. Okay. So we're, we're not planning on any, any restrictions there. Okay. Right. on that access and so uh, also um, uh, maybe to support that the, the the parks that are on top of the vaults the more the, the big square ones mm -hmm. those those are tracks that go to the city so that's actually city uh, sorry yeah city on property that the HOA will then maintain the surface of but okay. but the, the infrastructure that's below it and the property is, is, a, is a public space the pea patch would be inside the condominium if it's possible through a land use process to get that into the IHCA's hands. We would do that, but but I don't know that we can create a parcel for that. But but we're not going to restrict it. We and we don't. Uh, well, there are a lot of parks that we don't own. We usually have a public access easement, yeah. just to make sure that that intent is clear. Right. The, yeah, the, brownstone, like the brownstone plaza, as an example, is yeah. is a there's a, a public use easement through that 35 yeah. or whatever foot corridor. Right, and yeah, like I said, I only brought it up because I saw that happen in the other community. And was it the YWCA? Nope. Oh, um, okay, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not going to be able to come back and complain later. So, I mean, I could, but no one will be here to listen. Right. Much like tonight. Um, okay. Um, Anything else, Richard? Uh, not, not for me. I would be interested. I mean, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to respond, but uh, I think the, the yeah, public uh, input would be great. Hear from the public would be yeah. great, and then we can all have a chance to respond. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, at this time, uh, for those that just popped in, um, we do have a sign-up sheet, and it's right here on uh, this desk right here. If you had, it looks like we have some names on there. Thank you. Anybody else like to sign up before we get the sheet over here? Thank you. I'm going to open the public comment section of this meeting right now. Can you tell us who the first name on the list is? Mike. Mike. Okay. That's what I figured. <laughs> so if I could ask you to sta uh, state your name, address, and uh, comments are better than <laughs> keep your comments to, f to five minutes or less, please. Thank you. Th thanks. thanks, Lucy, for loading the presentation. So hello, my name is Mike Zalewski. I've been to several of these before. It's been a long process, but now that we're here, um, <coughs> here I am, the one person that apparently likes to work out outside. So I am going to give my plug for hey. exercise oh equipment. And so thank you, Polygon and City and Hewitt for putting that together. Um, this will sort of be my own, my own spin and, and counter proposal. Take it for what it's worth. I want to provide you the information. Use it how you see fit. Um, so right now, uh, exercise nodes are proposed for one, two, four, and five, I believe. Um, I was considering that maybe as a compromise here um, in terms of there's a debate about usage that um, my counter proposal is, um, well, sorry, let me take a step back. So I think one of the reasons why a lot of the equipment is not used is it's usually like very specific and um, one, one style of use. So my counter proposal to this is having something a little more multi-use and to just pare it down to just maybe one location with a larger footprint. And that would house something like this, sort of a very uh, multi-use, low-maintenance um, bar system that not only adults but kids can climb around on as well. Um, this is, like you said, Jeff, it's, it's very popular in Europe and apparently Israel and um, some of the urban areas um, in our country. Um, so here was some um, possible vendors that you could use. I'll just breeze through these, but um, I tried to get some quotes for some system so you can get an idea of pricing. I have no idea how much you can spend or, and all that, but 
Here's some options here that you can use and look up. Um, looks like it can be anywhere from four to 5,000 upwards to 20,000 for pretty sophisticated ones. And all of them seem to be able to be available here. Um, so this was my other idea. I know this was brought up on the survey and I took the survey and um, another option that might be a little more conducive to like a nice feature is something like a, a climbing area. Th these are uh, examples of areas that already exist, but there's no real like premier location on the east side. And I think these uh, look pretty nice aesthetically. However, I feel like if we pursue this, um, please consult with the experts, whether it's the mountaineers or maybe we, we could collaborate with REI, maybe they could even pick up some of the tab here to have some sponsorship or something. Um, and then again, here is some options for ideas and vendors and can be used by kids and adults alike. And here's some um, pretty extreme examples, which I would actually personally like, that would be great. <laughs> um, so to close out here, I, I'm, I'm glad that you are incorporating some type of fitness or exercise or active feature, uh, whether it's a, a climbing option or a bar option, I think it can be usable by both um, adults and kids. And it uh, should be pretty low maintenance cost and um, hopefully remain within the guidance of the noise and nuisances. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zalewski. Uh, next in the, on the list is Chris Shanins. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. Shaning. Shaning. Oh, sorry. It's just G, not an S. Hi, I'm Chris Shaning. I live just a few doors down from Mike in the subdivision just south of the new development. And I want to second your proposal for general purpose structures as a playground, maybe climbing stuff. My kids are grown, but I think that's a great idea. Uh, my primary concern is I'm a bicyclist, and currently there are two bicycle lanes on the road that is scheduled to be removed, and those would not be replaced. Um, that is the only route right now by bike between our subdivision and the transit center or any place else in Issaquah, right? So with bike lanes. So uh, I know that most of the community is in favor of building and maintaining and improving access via bikes, and I'd, I'd love to see that maintained. Um, I think the proposal that we saw had steps. It has playgrounds, and trying to commute via steps and playgrounds with kids running around is difficult. So, um, also, I didn't see anything in the presentation that takes the, the plan in its context within uh, the neighborhood, like the gravel pit. Right now there's a 200 foot wall between the road and the gravel pit. And I'd like to know how that's being addressed. What's gonna happen at the gravel pit? And w are we gonna have kids playing around and jumping that fence? Um, also landslide. Um, if you look at the city's disaster plan, there are two um, emergency, like, you know, red, red light warning, don't do anything here because there's gonna be a landslide a couple of areas. One of them Polygon just built houses on. It was the site of a landslide, I think in 2001 or 2000, maybe 99 or something. Uh, and that gravel pit is just, you know, it's 200 feet high. At some point it's gonna slide, whether it's an earthquake or, or whatever. Uh, I'd love to see how that's gonna be mitigated. And if it happens, who pays for it? The city, Issaquah Highlands, or the homeowners? You know, it's, it's a big thing if it happens. Um, so. That's my piece. Thank you, Mr. Shaney. Appreciate it. Uh, next on the list is Kyler Danielson. I don't need to speak. You don't want to speak? Okay. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, Sarah Hoy. Good evening, uh, Sarah Hoy. I'm the director for IHCA. Um, first of all, I wanna say um, thank you for all of your hard work on the UVDC. I know that a lot of you have been on the commission for quite a long time, and there's been a lot of wonderful work done, um, as well as with Lucy. Thank you for being here so sick. <laughs> so thank you. Um, okay, just a few words, and I'll answer some of the questions that I heard. 
Um, the IHCA Builder ARC has been working with Polygon in the city for a number of years now um, on the new Westridge neighborhood development. There are currently 21 parks in the Highlands, uh, not including the three city parks. The entire Westridge project has the additional four parks planned in total, which is what Richard was talking about. Um, and the one at Westridge South, which you weren't seeing here, is the one by Swedish. They just finished that park, and it has a uh, shelter and a uh, climbing gym and a huge grass area and sitting area. Um, the High Street Park could possibly be, or this High Street Park could possibly be the last park we design in the Highlands. And I believe that all parties here tonight have taken that under uh, consideration during this design process. Um, the design also includes careful oversight on my behalf of the future financial impact and maintenance responsibilities that will be required from the IHCA in the future. Um, let's see, during this design process, we all collectively reviewed the sever survey results from the Issaquah Highlands residents, which was used to implement the designs that you see here today. Uh, due to the geographical location to future home sites, we are not able to implement all the om owner's ideas. Um, however, I do feel that we have, uh, we, I do feel that a majority of the ideas were encompassed into the design and integrates appropriately to the connecting pedestrian trails and open spaces. As a director of IHCA, I have witnessed this community's pride and tradition, whether it's the annual GOAT program that visits our community, the annual Highlands Day Festival or Santa's visits. I'm hoping that this park serves as tradition for the Issaquah Highlands community um, and to enjoy the su sunsets with loved ones for generations to come. And I'm proud to be a part of this design process. Um, the Builder ARC approves this high street uh, park design presented this evening. Um, and then the question of the budget came in. Um, it is a little bit complex in this particular area because it was originally designed for the Microsoft campus. So it's considered to be in the high street sector. So these homes are subject to the IHCA, IHCA Master Association assessments plus the high street sector uh, assessments. So everyone in the Issaquah Highlands play, play, uh, pays their pro rata share towards the maintenance and landscaping expenses for all of, all of Issaquah Highlands, but we'll also have additional revenue, a great deal of additional revenue from the Westridge uh, homeowners. Um, and then also the condo owners as well will, will uh, have part in that. So it is very, will be very adequately funded. Um, and we are, I also would like to mention, um, we're 1% in the nation of having 100% funded reserves at this point. Um, so out of the 260,000 HOAs in the United States, we're 1% um, and we're extremely financially sound. But we will uh, ensure that what is installed here is able to be maintained by the IHCA, is not a burden on the IHCA. I think they had mentioned um, that I refused for them to put in wood benches. Um, we would rather have something that's more sustainable. Um, and we look at that from everything to um, water usage, to irrigation, to lighting, to what, what trees we know work here and what don't. The white birches um, are dying out within the community and they're not thriving here, so we don't recommend those. Um, uh, our landscape and land, um, um, maintenance departments are extremely involved in looking at all these plans as well because um, Lyle, I don't know if you all know Lyle, but he's been uh, part of the landscaping since the beginning of time uh, when everything was installed and he is extremely knowledgeable on what, what is working and what is not. So, um, Trail rules, good question. Um, I typically, we don't really have manpower to go out and enforce who's going too fast on their bike and so forth. If we get a complaint, then we would try to address it. We don't, uh, to my knowledge, we don't have any specific language on, you know, if roller blades are allowed or not. Um, I think that we would just take that on a case by case basis. Um, I do like the um, comment on the safety for the bicyclists as well as the pedestrians. Um, that was an excellent point. So I think we need to look at that a little bit harder. 
Um, and I also like the idea of a call for um, emergencies or some sort of a button. That was actually talked about um, when we were designing this. Um, and then we'll work with the fire department and EMT to see what they would prefer on a notification. Um, I also work with the IPD uh, resident liaison. Um, I can't think of his name right now. Brian Smith. Thank you. Um, and he, he's wonderful and uh, he, I'm sure he can help us give us some good tips on that. I think signage here is gonna be really important. Ways to you know, get to the nearest main entry. Um, when I came on, we actually put uh, placards on each one of the parks, which was never there. And um, this came about when a child was missing and um, it went out via social media and they said it's Bear Park. Well, nobody knew what Bear Park was, but it was actually Roanoke Park. Um, so that, that prompted us to start labeling that with addresses so that if there's an emergency, somebody says, I'm at this park, this is the address. And that's really important for the safety of the kids. Um, holiday lighting, I'll look into. It's extremely expensive. I know. Um, you just said you're getting a whole lot of money. So. What's that? <laughs> you just said you're getting a whole lot of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but they're also, they're really hard to get on off season. Yeah. So, um, but I'll look into that. Um, love the performance space idea. However, I would caution that anything major would have to get a city permit, um, which sometimes goes with issues as far as um, parking requirements and public bathrooms and so forth. And then touching briefly on the garden, Pea Patch Garden Program, Christy runs that program and she's, she's a saint for doing so. <laughs> it can be kind of um, um, uh, difficult sometimes. Um, that is uh, actually owners pay to get in and anyone can use them if they don't even have to be residents of Issaquah Highlands. Um, and they're very well used and um, and I think that that would be a great addition. Um, we've worked really closely with the design as well with Polygon for this, for um, workbenches and uh, water and trash and so forth based on what we know from the existing pea patch program. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you and Christy and Nina and everybody that's been involved up in the Highlands for all of your contributions over the years uh, to the UBDC process, city process, and all the stuff that we don't ever see. You guys have all been amazing and uh, you know great partners and help us understand a lot of things and respond to a lot of things. So I want to thank you for that. It's been an amazing partnership, so thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yes, you're welcome. All right. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Get your question answered, Ben and Michelle? Yeah, okay. Thank yeah. you. And thanks, Ben, for staying on the ARC for resident. He also does the regular residential for, for all of uh, IHCA, and he's been there for years and does a great job. So right. thanks. Okay. All right, cool. So uh, the last one on the list, and not by no means am I closing this up yet, but Brian Smith, would you like to speak? So I live in the Issaquah Highlands area, and uh, thank you, Lucy, for keeping us posted. I appreciate all the information you've posted and sent us. So a um, couple things I just have to, to comment on is that um, I've taken over my dad's health and well-being, and now he's an amputee. And I just wanted to talk about, I saw some of the stairs. Um, and I want to make sure that there's wheelchair accessibility and that there's a way that someone can get, whether it's a stroller, whether it's a bike, that they're not jumping up and down. I know that they just built the new trail on what is the West Ridge and there's a bunch of stairs and so forth. So I just want to make sure that there's accessibility from a wheelchair perspective or a stroller, whether a wife or I know I think I've seen you with your dog and on the little um, interesting bicycle um just make sure that you don't hop up and down and so <laughs> yeah. um so that's that's one of my things that i would ask about and i know that we talked about some of the sun shelters but i even just covered shelters i think some of them might be of a benefit to have some covered shelters so that in the event that there is some rain whether it's in the section three or in one um whether you're working out or wherever um it might be having might be helpful to have some covered shelters um, I think we already touched upon who's paying for it. Um, and I think everything else is good. And again, I thank you all for your effort and energy into this. I know it's been a long process. So thanks. Thank you, Brian. 
Uh, okay, there's nobody else on the list. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? May I add something? Uh, yes, for, uh, normally we don't allow this, but it's my last meeting, and what are they gonna do, fire me? <laughs> come, on, come to the microphone, though, please. Okay, sure. Thanks. I, I was a little broken up last time I talked because I'm standing here in front of Polygon and there is no company or human being that's done my family more harm than Polygon. And my request is that you consider other developers um, when you look at further developments. Anybody can contact me. My address is on there if you want details. Thank you. Okay, anybody else like to speak? Last chance? All right, we will now close, I'm gonna use this again, the public comment portion of the uh, meeting tonight. Uh, would you like to add anything, Lucy, respond to anything, or uh, Hewitt, Polygon, anybody? No? So, um, I, I don't need to add anything. I okay. think um, Jeff and I had a brief conversation. This is kind of a typical type of, um, atypical, not a typical uh, meeting in that we're, that this is going to be an administrative decision, but we want to have clear guidance from the commission. So there isn't an official motion that we're asking you to take, but I think it would be helpful to hear from the commissioners if you have a consensus recommendation um, either as is or specific changes. You've given us several things that we're gonna go back and um, look into, so it, it isn't as if you have to recap everything that you've already said. But if you've heard things from the public comment or from each other that you wanna give us specific direction or guidance as your recommendation, that would be helpful to us. That's great, and before we do that, I would like to have a bit of a discussion between us and see if there are further questions that need to be answered of or course. anything that you've heard from the public that would help help us get to that point of uh, sort of making an informal recommendation, basically, is what it comes down to. <clears throat> I, heard, I heard three things, actually I heard many things, but three, three stuck out in my head. Um, the comment on ADA or wheelchair uh, access, I think, has been silent as we've gone through this, and I really appreciate that comment and mm -hmm. would ask that we um, ask that recommendation. Can I, can I touch on that just for a second? Please. Um, so um, we have a great building official who that is a real priority of his. So we will be working with him. Um, I know that the east-west trails, because of the grades that come in, they do have stairs. I think there was some misunderstanding about the main multi-use trail. Some of the graphics um, being conceptual in nature were intended to show pavement changes, but I think they read as if they are stairs. The, Multi-use trail will be one singular plane from north to south, so a bicyclist could use it. Um, it would be ADA accessible from like either end. Um, I think, and I, and I know that Hewitt has thought very carefully about um, some of the places where stairs are shown getting from one level to another. There is also a pathway. This is mainly at the overlook. Um, there are paths that connect and meet ADA requirements. So it's definitely been taken into consideration, but every route is not ADA accessible. Right. understand. Okay. Um, the other um, was just, a, um, it was actually in my notes and I forgot it, um, the covered shelter versus just a sun shelter. I think mm -hmm. that is in the Northwest, uh, uh, something interesting. Um, and I would like to amend my Hesitation comments on exercise equipment. The exercise equipment that I've seen installed in Talus was exercise specific, uh, single use. Um, so I think Mike may have left. Um, I was really impressed and was educated in terms of multi-use, multi-age groups, multi-capabilities, and would be totally uh, supporting that. Great, thank you. Those would be my three. And do you have anything? I really don't. I, I think the only thing that comes to mind is uh, Sarah's comments about this being the last three or four parks that are being built in the Highlands. This 20-year project is coming to an end, and this is its as much discussion as we've had about density of housing. This is pretty much it. This is the end of what's going to be built up there. So I think it's important that we evaluate what goes into the parks, and I think that it's been laid out really well. Uh, I think that uh, 
we've been provided good information and I just, I look forward to having another space to take my kids to. Great, thank you. Carl? Um, mine's a little bit like Michelle. I, I think it was Mr. Smith commented on the covered pieces and I, same thing, it was in my notes and I didn't do it because I, I saw the sunshade, so sort of funny. Um, I will look for Mr. Zalewski when I'm out running. I <laughs> love that he said that. The only thing that I think in sort of where Michelle was going, I think the ADA piece should be essentially a requirement, not a let's it is look a and consider. Okay, it is that was it. Yeah. Probably why it wasn't really discussed is sort of a foregone conclusion, but, assume, but but yeah. it would have but, been but nice to call it But that's important to say because you wouldn't know that. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. So I, I guess my only comments would be, first of all, thank you uh, to everyone who, who commented. Uh, all great comments. I, I, I do like Mike's idea if it's possible to have you know, a, a one area where you could have um, multiple exercises going on. I think that's a terrific idea and maybe more useful and utilized than others potentially. Um, I know that all of this is probably in there to some degree, but I just want to say it, dog waste uh, facilities, the trash floor. and recycle facilities, uh, bike parking and maintenance I saw there, just be really thoughtful about where those go, not just there because it fits there, but there because that's where people are actually going to stop and park their bikes. Otherwise, they're literally just going to lay them on the on the road or on the uh, trail or on the grass where it's more convenient for them. Uh, drainage, I think Sarah talked about that a little bit, but I know we had some real problems with some drainage in a couple of the parks early on. I think, by and large, that's been taken care of over the years, but I just, I'd hate to see us have to shut that park down for a while because we have to fix something we didn't get done right. And then the part that we didn't really talk about, which is tied to safety, is, and I know that you talked about materials uh, at, at grade changes and at other locations where the materials change. I'm thinking about the east-west tracks that go, or the east-west trails that go through. I'm a little concerned about people riding bikes or even strollers or even running and people crossing their paths. So I don't, I don't have an answer here. I've seen different things done, but I, I don't know if we need to have warning signs, you know, you know, trail crossing or something else. I know that the, the uh, material change on the ground might indicate that, but someone might not be thinking that when they're riding a bike. So I want to be thinking about that from a safety perspective. I, I would just add, I know Hewitt has been very conscious of that. And okay. so, uh, we haven't really gotten into signage. We've been using, you know, more focused on the design, nonverbal part of it, and uh, we'll certainly during the construction permit um, process consider how best to handle that. Thank you. So, uh, if I if I may, and just slap me around if I'm wrong here, but it seems to me that what's been laid out in front of us, in addition to the comments that we've made and the responses to the public comments that's been made, that we've essentially provided our thinking and direction, not direction, but um, that's what I'm looking for, recommendation yep. to you. Um, do you guys all agree with that? Am I overstepping yes. my bounds? Okay. Um, so I want to thank you for, thank everybody for putting all of this together. I, like I said, I'm very excited about this project. And I think it's going to be a great asset to this community. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That's very helpful. Exceeded expectations. Yeah. yeah, really, it looks terrific. I'm very excited. Okay, so let's continue on with the agenda. At this time, I'd Why like don't, to... Could I recommend that just because we have a lot of people that yes. maybe we take a two or three minute break just to transition? Um, the next item would be the mayor and I... Sure. I'm not sure whether there may be people who choose to leave and I just thought that might... I'm going to be super short and actually I would rather say thank you. Okay, please. Yeah, then. go for it. Plus, I'm giving donuts to anyone who wants them on the way out of here, so stay. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for letting me address you this evening. My name is Mary Lee Polly. I'm the mayor of the city of Issaquah. This brings back memories. I served on the Development Commission for 20 years with rooms like this where developers, residents, city staff, all came out to talk to another group of citizens who's serving on a border commission and taking input. So um, it's sad it's your last night. I wanted to thank you because I think a lot of people who watch on TV or show up here sometimes think that this is your job or you're an elected council member and you're getting paid something to do this and the reality is very different. We're not? You are, no, <laughs> no check for you, Jeff. Sorry, no check for you. You're volunteers from the community who love this community just like I do, and you want to volunteer in a way that helps us get better development, better projects, 
better ideas for arts and culture. And you're not with your family tonight. You're not out playing cards or having fun. You gave up your night to be here and listen to wonderful Lucy present the information and listen to the, the applicant, uh, your neighbors that all came to try and make this a better project, and it's amazing. So I started serving in 1994. I think UVDC formed after that. Um, I couldn't quite understand why we needed two development commissions, but I watched the very first movie and saw that what you, or very first video and saw you guys were doing something different. So I just came tonight to thank you, some of you, I think Carl and Jeff for 20 years of service, and Ben and Michelle, thank you for staying through to the end. You're a small final four tonight, a different kind of final four, but thank you for doing it. It's sometimes hard to wind up those last projects, but I just have a little note of thank you from the clerk and myself uh, for all that you've done for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming here. Thank you. you got final four. Right. Just for those of you that are wondering, our ratings are much better than American Idol and the NCAA tournament. So, <laughs> at least for tonight. <laughs> at least that's what we tell ourselves. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Mayor, appreciate it very much. Okay. So um, our last item on the agenda tonight is um, our last public update, our last urban village update. And so for those of you who've been around for a while, um, we typically do this on an annual basis and kind of go through what we know is happening, um, uh, upcoming projects, things I can't think of at the moment because my brain isn't working. Um, so I'm just gonna run through each of the urban villages and sort of tell you where things are. Feel free to ask questions, this is very informal. So Isquah Highlands, the development agreement has been terminated. There are still projects that are being completed because they're um, under the development agreement, um, but uh, officially it has been terminated. This is the list of projects I'm gonna run through tonight. There'll be one of these little maps uh, that has dots to show you where the project is as we're going through it. So uh, Westridge has a lot going on. Um, all the um, different areas that they have under play have their land use permit, and they're in different phases of uh, construction. As they mentioned, something like uh, the North Townhomes, that isn't under construction right now. Other things like uh, High Street um, and Westridge North Single Family, as well as the Affordable Housing Project are moving forward more quickly. Westridge South um, is down to the final closeout inspections, so it's pretty much done. Um, High Street Collection, the preliminary plat was just resubmitted, and the three land use permits are at the Development Commission right now. Lucy, what's MOB? Oh, thank you, Medical Office Building. Uh, blocks 19 and 20, um, uh, the reason that I've really focused more on 19 is we haven't, uh, we understand that City Surf is not currently under contract for the property anymore. So um, we're not sure exactly what's going to happen with that project, so we're just kind of waiting to hear from either the property owner or City Surf where they get to with that particular project. However, block 19, the one, um, this is Marshalls and uh, Home Goods here, and this is kind of across the street. Um, it is about to, if it hasn't already started, it's about to it's go in. It's started. Okay. Crane is there. So um, I didn't have a good, this is the same one I showed you last year. Um, this is from their land use permit, um, because they, we don't usually get colored perspectives necessarily when we go through. But um, this is the site plan, and I, and I think the thing to point out is it's kind of a C-shaped building around a raised courtyard. And the pond, and the pond's over here, and then the trail. 
and there's another trail that runs along the wetlands. So there's some very nice pedestrian elements that are um, either incorporated or tied into as part of this project. I threw this in because it's just about to get done and Sarah has been through the ringer over this project, but it's uh, kind of up by the pea patch uh, off the um, power corridor and the maintenance building um, that she has been working for for a long time is just about to close out. Talus, uh, the development agreement is also uh, terminated. We have uh, several projects that are still in play. Uh, first are parcels seven through nine. Parcels seven and eight, which is this is seven up here and eight right here. Um, their final plat was finally approved. And um, we are doing a program called Registered Plans. That's um, not anything you're interested in. But anyway, we're doing our preliminary review of their building permits. Um, there was also a tract uh, right down here in front of the reservoir that was dedicated to the city. So at some point in the future, we'll be deciding what happens with that. It was identified for two potential uses. One was either a park or another sustainable building project, kind of like Z Home. Don't know where and what the city may choose to do with that. Parcel 9, which is here. Um, and here, uh, at this point, there's a series of four to five walls that are under construction to stabilize the site, and that's our primary focus at this time. Timber Ridge completely uh, finished. They've built all of their entitlement. Uh, the last part of that project was building, uh, converting this sort of corner area into, I believe it was four or five, uh, small units. Um, they could either be transitional units for people whose permanent unit inside the building wasn't complete or for snowbirds. They had several ideas, but I think they're all sold. Um, you may have heard that there, that the office project is, um, had not been successful. That was certainly conveyed to us during the closeout of the development agreement. The, um, School District has the property under contract and has been working with the city in preparing plans. Um, this is their preliminary concept that they gave us uh, maybe within the last month. Um, so North is up here, so uh, SR 900 is here. Here's Talus Drive coming in, and this is Timber Ridge. So there is a building up at the street and then a track and field um, down here. This image is if you're standing across SR 900 looking up the hill towards the school with um, Timber Ridge behind. And I included this one just because this is standing on Falcon Drive, let's say maybe around here or here looking down at the school, and, I, and the reason I show that to you is I want to give a sense of how much topography it, there is. It is um, a very challenging site given how many things need to be flat, um, you know, like a field. Um, <laughs> but their building is almost five stories tall from, um, from the lowest level over here all the way to the upper level. Um, and they have a lot of structured parking to serve staff um, and um, teachers. So um, it's, it's a, and they're working with the architectural review committee now to make sure that it fits in with the architectural expectations of TALIS. Um, the TOD, Transit Oriented Development, Development Agreement, which no one really talks about because it's been finished for a long time, but that was another one that was terminated when we terminated Issaquah Highlands and um, Issaquah Highlands, Issaquah Highlands and Talis, sorry, uh, development agreements. We also terminated this one because it's completely built out. Just for reference, that's the YWCA and Z Home is where the, that particular development agreement is located. Uh, the WASHDOT TDR project um, or development agreement that was not terminated um, because Bellevue College has not built out yet, 
but the boundary was adjusted, so the only part of that agreement that's still in effect relates to that property. The rest of the residential areas, um, which are Pinecrest and Sunridge, are complete, and so we took them out of that development agreement, and they are now governed by the same rules as the rest of Issaquah Highlands. Uh, Rally has two projects going on right now. One is an office building, and they call it the Poplar Office Building. It's right here next to Arena Sports. And um, it has, you know, four levels, ground floor. They're hoping to get a daycare in um, one, about half of the ground floor, and then potentially some kind of retail um, in that ground floor. They'll see how well they do. But with the residential coming in at Gateway, as well as Arena Sports, there's some opportunities for um, synergy. Um, the bottom building I just put in because I know staff are very excited to be reviewing a brewery. Um, the, uh, it's going into an existing building, uh, so it is not a new building. Um, it's located approximately here, which um, I'm not sure there's any, I, I guess it's where Gertz and some of those other uses that face. Next to the trampoline, near yep. the trampoline place. Yep. Um, but anyway, they're doing a lot of work to um, make it uh, notable and visual and um, have a brewery there. Um, Lakeside. Okay, and hopefully live music is what I'm, I'm told. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Um, Lakeside, there's not a lot of activity, although they have been very interested in the high street conversion and the relationship of those activities to their mining. So um, that's mainly where our work has been with them not so much about the later phases. As you may remember, they completed um, the Isquad Terrace area up here on the other side of Highlands Drive from the park and ride. The rest of the area will probably not be undertaken until they fish, finished mining it out and have kind of rebuilt it and are ready to reclaim it. However, there are two areas that they could build sooner, not that they have indicated to us that they will. Neighborhood F, which is down here, the one that we have retained that road to access, that is at its finished grades now. <clears throat> and then there's some area here at High and Ninth that um, where their sort of village center would go. I'm not sure that it would make sense to do it in advance, but they could because um, they don't necessarily have to mine it out and replace um, different grades. Swedish, I think this is the last one. We are now meeting with them quarterly. They are doing all the programmatic work on, to um, set up for their master plan. And then at, um, because they have certain requirements when we approve this temporary parking lot uh, across Blakely, we made it clear that that parking lot, while we understood from a functional perspective, that it was needed to ensure that the hospital and medical office building would um, succeed. Um, its location and design was not consistent with the development agreement. So they had five years to get certain things done and then they could get another five years for a total of 10 years of that temporary parking lot. And the master plan is one of those requirements. So they are working towards a master plan, which we look forward to hearing about, but have seen nothing other than know that they are working on the programmatic piece. Um, you may be aware that Swedish merged with Providence, and so it's taken a bit of time for all of that to settle out enough to figure out where, um, as an organization, their funding's gonna go, what kinds of services they are providing in which location, and to really get a good sense of um, what uses are most successful here. They did last fall finish building out the last of the hospital beds. They had 175 hospital beds and a very specific deadline in which to put all of those in place or they lose their state certification. So they achieved that, which was really great. And so I think now that that's done, they're turning to that next phase. 
Any questions on, on the urban villages? Yeah, actually I do have a couple, but I'll defer to the commission first if anybody has any questions or thoughts. I do not. I do not. On um, Talus uh, Parcel 9, has a decision been made on the density of housing that will eventually go in there? So, um, we're under litigation, so I'm not going to say very much. I'm just going to say that there is a plat, a preliminary plat that's been approved for 90 houses. That's what I, what I can say now. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you for that update. It's very helpful. Uh, we've really um, seen a lot over the years. Um, and, and I have to say that it's really been generally pretty consistent, I think. I think the master development agreement was uh, while it had its moments and, you know, arguments and thoughts and from different angles, I thought it was relatively consistent. Um, I know there were different agreements, but, but basically I'm thinking of the Highlands in particular and Talos, really, but they've really been built out generally to what I think everyone was expecting with some exceptions, right? Uh, and it's an amazing place to live and be a part of, and, and uh, I just think that uh, so many people have been involved uh, before I got involved, since I've been involved, and all these, you know, um, multiple mayors, and Mayor Pauly has, has really stepped up as she started in here. So it's been great. So thank you for all that you've done. And I wish Keith was here to thank him as well, and Candy and Gayla and everybody else that's been here over the years, and Susan and well, my, Mike Martin and you know, everybody really. Um, uh, two questions I have. One is, uh, I don't remember the, uh, the, what it's called, but across from um, Cafe Ladro and the dry cleaner, there's that piece of land that was going to be, uh, they were talking about the IACA office. What's going on right there? So um, I'm gonna say something and Sarah can tell me I got it wrong. My understanding is that they pursued that and in the end the, um, Dry utility infrastructure that was already installed in that location would just just have been way too expensive to relocate to be able to take advantage of that. So at this time, they've abandoned that um, piece of property for that use. So is there potential for future development there? Or, and if so, does it go to the Development Commission or what happens? So that property is owned by the IHCA and, um, my mem and I am doing this from memory. All the property that is owned by the IHCA was zoned for um, some kind of community facility. Mm -hmm. So for any um, thing other than the IHCA's use, it would require a rezone, which would be a public process through okay. the council. Okay, thank you. And then the other question was, um, and I have to ask it because it's we're not gonna be back again, but did anything ever come of anybody's uh, research or discussion with uh, um, with Regency Centers about the parking situation out there. The, for those that don't know what I'm talking about, some signs went up, they're now restricting parking to two hours and where the Starbucks and Jimmy John's and others are and are uh, <coughs> fining drivers, fining um, automobile owners uh, $50 if you're there longer than two hours if they, if they happen to ticket you. And, that was against everything, in my opinion, that we all talked about over the years, and I, there was no discussion as to whether or not, or why that was happening, and nobody knew it was coming, and it just sort of appeared, so. So, coincidentally, I met, was meeting with Craig Ramey, um, the vice president in charge of that project, not long after your meeting. Um, I mentioned to him um, concerns that were raised. I sent him the clip of the meeting so that he could hear all of your comments because I think um, it was important for him to hear, you know, I think um, Jeff and Michelle in particular, you had very specific experiences with the enforcement folks that were not very positive, um, were not positive at all, and I wanted Craig to really hear that on a first, um, in a first direct kind of way. So I sent that to him. I offered to um, give him an opportunity to either speak or provide some kind of response to the commission. In the end, he chose not to do that. Um, the other piece that the city has been doing, there was a detailed parking survey. Um, it was primarily focused in the downtown area, or in the Front Street area, but it also included Issaquah Highlands. 
And I sent that to Craig because I wanted him to see what the survey had shown um, in terms of um, usage and when things were full and um, trying to provide some objective information around the perception that people had. Um, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with his concerns that the BevMo parking lot was being used by people in the park and ride. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, frankly, I expressed some of the same concerns that two hours was not um, a length of time that necessarily meshed with the way we understood that that would be used. We had a good conversation, and that's the last I heard. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just continue to monitor it as best we can. And I'm officially out, so there's nothing I can do, I suppose. Um, okay. Well, that, those were my questions. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions before we move on? Uh, no. I have, a, I have a couple of other little pieces. Okay. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out, um, because you won't have these updates anymore, um, the city um, has, uh, on the city website, this is the home page of the city, and this um, new development box that's on the front page, if you click on that, you are taken directly to our active projects map. Um, and that shows, you, it's not every single thing happening in the city, but the, it's sort of the, sometimes even quite small, but you know, mostly moderate and large size projects that are happening. The colors indicate whether they are in review, which could be either land use or construction, and then the gray means they're under construction. So, um, and if you, when you get there, if you're interested in a particular project, you can click on it, and on the left-hand side, you will get all the contact, um, you'll get, you can, there's other links to the some, uh, selection of documents that are available for the public to review. So I want you to know that there are other ways to keep track of what's happening in neighborhoods that you're interested in in the city. Great, thank you. Uh, I was on there today. <laughs> <laughs> good, I mean, we use it a lot. It's been really good with the school district and the county, a lot of people are using it. So that's, that's where it makes us very happy. Um, I had sent you an email earlier and was interested in uh, lessons learned. I think you have started to say some of those, but we would really, before, before we lose access to you as a, as a commission, not to you as individuals, um, want to hear if you have some lessons learned from your time on the UVDC that you would be willing to share with us just to help us um, make sure we take those things forward. Okay. Anything else? Um, there are a couple of upcoming things that I wanted to mention. Uh, the city's strategic plan, which we came and did a survey with you um, as part of the kickoff. There's a presentation later this week at um, Planning Policy Commission in the evening, and there's also an online survey. So I encourage all of you to take the survey looking at the draft strategic plan and give us any feedback on that. The Puget Sound Regional Council is also doing a Vision 2050 plan, and there will be public comment at the April 8th, I think it's council work session, or maybe it's the council meeting. Um, so um, feel free to um, participate in that. And then we have to make a motion at some point. Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the bad, bad news um, part. Um, okay, is it appropriate to say my parting comments before this or after? I would love to hear your parting comments <laughs> now. <laughs> I'll keep them brief. I just, I've mentioned a couple people and I've mentioned, you know, thanked a few people, but um, I do really just want to overall thank the commission for the work and time uh, that they put in. It's been a pleasure serving with you. Carl and I have served on this for at least 10 years together. We've been friends for 20. Um, I've been on the commission for almost 20 years now. So I've seen a lot and I've enjoyed it and I can't believe I'm still here, but um, I can't say that after tonight. Um, but also I wanna uh, thank uh, our viewers, who I know you are plenty. 
Hi, the two of you that are out there right now. Um, and the general public, the uh, residents and others that have come in, we've had people like David Kapler and, and Connie Marsh and, and others that have come in many, many times, spent a ton of time researching things, responding, uh, giving us ideas, changing our minds, uh, enlightening us, all kinds of things. And I really want to thank them. I know they're not here tonight. I was a little surprised. I was hoping they would be. But... Um, but I, it should go, uh, it should, we shouldn't leave without, without thanking all of them for their input because we're just a few people that have dedicated a bit of time to doing this for one reason or another. But there's so many other people in this community that spend a lot more time in some cases doing things uh, and understanding things um, before we ever get here. So I just think that uh, they need to be recognized as well. Thanks to the city staff. Lucy, I know you've sacrificed a lot and as have Keith and others. Um, but it's also been a lot of fun uh, to hang out with you guys and work through a lot of this stuff. So thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure um, serving and also a pleasure being the, uh, the chairman for a few years here as well. Thank you. All right. Can we give you that information later? <laughs> the sure, learned. you can they send it. They don't want it tonight. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, and of course, we're not going to close on time. This is great. All right. Does any uh, would anyone like to make a motion, Mr. Vice oh, Chair? Mr. Vice Chair, uh, I move that we delegate the commission's authority to approve and file the March 26 UVDC meeting minutes to the commission chair and staff liaison if no subsequent UVDC meeting is scheduled prior to August 30, 2019, or another date by which future meetings might occur. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Motion passed. All right. We're history. So now it's time for a party. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We'll close the meeting now at 9.05 p.m., our final meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have donuts, and I swear if you don't take them with you, I'll have to take them with me. So please take some.